program submissions, which is good. Um, so any, any lingering questions on PA2? If you didn't submit anything, please submit something like right away so that I have at least something to look at and then we can talk about it from there. Um, even if you feel like, you know, you barely got started, um, submitting what you have lets me know kind of where you are in the process of figuring this stuff out and, and we can talk about it from there. Um, but it's, it's a starting point for, uh, for ongoing conversations. All right, well, I will try to get PA2 graded by Monday. I cannot promise because there's stuff going on this weekend and I got midterms to write and things. But um, but I will try to get them graded. I got one of them graded already. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's take a look at PA3. So how many people have looked at this already? Cool. All right. So, um, so PA3 is all about GUIs. So you're going to want to use Eclipse and Swing and Window Builder. Um, and you're going to have to submit a file that's created by Eclipse. So even if you secretly are going to use IntelliJ or NetBeans or something else, you're going to have to get it into Eclipse at some point just to export it correctly. Um, so you're building a calculator for this one. So it's going to be a GUI based calculator. Um, kind of like what we started to develop with our two button binary calculator, <laughs> but a full blown decimal calculator, bless you. Um, and I'm going to do something I have not done before. And we're going to see how it works. I'm going to let you decide what grade you want for this assignment. Um, so your grading, uh, 10 points will be based on documentation, 5 points based on correct submission. The behavior of the program, the functional capability is worth 85 points. And you can get those 85 points by whatever combination of features you like while also avoiding deductions. So here's, here's the point breakdown. If you get a basic frame that looks like a calculator, has buttons and a display, you get 15 points for that. Okay, so that's being able to create a frame and put some buttons on it with labels on them and so on. Um, if additionally you can hit the buttons and it will display a number that you're building up button by button, that's worth another 20 points. Okay, and if you can do add, subtract, multiply, and divide on integers, that's worth 30 points. So basic integer calculator is worth 65 out of 85 points. Okay, so good documentation, correct submission, you're up to an 85 out of 100. Sorry, 80 out of, 80 out of 100, which is pretty good. So now we've got embellishments. So a clear button that clears the last entry, you know, the C. So you can say 5 plus and you start typing in a number, you hit C and it remembers the 5 plus, but it just clears out that second number. That's worth 5 points. Um, the thing with constants, so if you say like 2 plus 3 equals, it gives you a 5. Now, if you say 10 equals, it does 2 plus 10. And if you say 16 equals, it'll do 2 plus 16. So it remembers the earlier part of the calculation. That's worth 5 points. If you can make it work with real numbers, that's worth 15 points. So put a decimal point on that you type in, and you can do 2.5 times 2 equals, and it gives you 5. Or 1 over 7, and it gives you that value. Um, you can get five points for adding in four scientific functions of your choosing. Sine, cosine, logarithms, exponents, powers, square roots, factorials, whatever you choose, um, have fun with it. If it handles division by zero in a reasonable way, that's worth five points. And if you make it resizable so that when you drag a corner of the calculator, the buttons grow, the display grows, everything stays looking pretty cool, that's worth five points also. Um, so that adds up to way more than 85 points. You can't get more than 100 on the assignment. You can't get more than 85 <coughs> on the functional behavior. 
um, but you can pick and choose how you want to get there. Um, and a few deductions. If the zero key is not handled correctly, for example, if you just keep hitting zero, it shouldn't show zero, 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 right? We saw this when we played with this in class. If you don't handle the zero key correctly, that costs you five points. If you don't handle double decimal points, that costs you five points. So you shouldn't be able to say one point, 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 point five and have it put in all those points. Um, if the program crashes, that's going to cost you 15 points, so no exceptions, okay? Which means um, you want to thoroughly test your program. You want to give your executable to a friend and say, break this for me, and see if they can break it, and you can try to break theirs. There's a lot of wiggle room in here. Um, when I say basic frame looks like a calculator, I haven't rigorously defined what that means. Okay, so this is part of the, the stuff that I have not tried before. We're going to try to be reasonable about this, and I'm going to say if you have any doubts, ask early. Okay, if you turn in a calculator that only has three buttons on it, and the display can only hold one digit, and you say, well, I thought that was reasonable looking, right? If I don't think it's reasonable looking, it's, it's not going to be reasonable. So ask early, right? Hey, I'm thinking this is what it's going to look like. Is this reasonable? I'll tell you no. Okay, and I'll tell you why I think you should change it in certain ways. Um, but we all know what a calculator is, right? And so, so try to stick to the spirit of of what a calculator is. My, my goal is not to, to end up with 60 calculator programs that I can like secretly use or sell to people, nor is my goal to try to dock you as many points as possible. Um, my goal is to give you an opportunity to work with GUIs, to work with Eclipse and Window Builder, and, and hopefully have some fun. Right, and to think about some stateful programming, to use what you know about Java and about programming and algorithms and debugging to put together something that when you're done, you know, you might put on your portfolio or something. You can export these things into a single jar file and just run it without Eclipse and so on. And you can say, hey, here's a calculator program I wrote. Yeah. Uh, can we use RPN? Oh. Um, Let me see if that's going to complicate anything up here. Um, if you want to make an RPN calculator, that's okay. I think it's going to be harder, depending on what you're doing. So I'm not, I'm not requiring any um, parentheses, any precedence of operations. So if you say 2 plus 3 times 4, you can do 2 and then add 3 and then multiply by 4. You don't have to say, oh, time should come first, right? Um, I'm not looking for, you know, an arithmetic expression parser like you would have in C, um, but that's certainly options. So yeah, RPM would be okay. If you want to do parentheses, you could do that, but I think that's pretty tricky. <coughs> All right, so there's a sample of what it could look like. All right, it's got some buttons. I've got a decimal point on there that's not required. I've got an all clear button um, so I can do more than one calculation without having to throw this away and buy a new one. Um, and so on. All right, so um, requirements. Your program should display something like a standard calculator. Buttons, operators, and so on. Um, got to use GUI. Okay, you can't just read from the keyboard, say enter the first number, enter the second number, and so on. And you, you can't use a pretend GUI, right? If you have a, a graphics object and it says, please enter the first number, and it makes you type the first number in and hit enter, and then it says, please, it's technically a GUI, but it's still reading from the keyboard, right? And, and that's not what we're after, okay? Um, so if you're in doubt, ask. All right. Really important note here. 
in looking around, there are tons of online tutorials on how to make a calculator using Swing in Java. Okay, it's a really standard sort of go-to problem. Um, and I'm going to ask you not to look at any of those sources. Okay, so if, if you're stuck with a J button, I can't get things to respond when I click on my J button, right? My preference would be go back to your notes, post a discussion question, ask in class, ask in office hours, right? But if you absolutely have to look something up, look up information on J buttons, right? Maybe look up a sample, how to call code when a J button is clicked, that kind of thing. But don't go to, you know, calculator program in Java, right? Because it's, it's going to short circuit your learning on this. And, and we're going to be doing GUIs for probably the other two programs. Um, and you'll be doing these down the road. And so you really want to sort of go through the, the mental process of figuring this stuff out yourself. And I can help you without giving away answers, without uh, taking away the chance to sort of figure it out. Um, I can help point you in directions and so on. All right, so you want to use Eclipse and Window Builder. Um, use JDK 1.8 or 1.9. Um, yeah. All right, we'll talk about ideas on how to work up to this. Um, how to design the algorithms and such. Uh, submission is going to be an export from Eclipse. We're going to go through this in careful detail. Um, and I'm going to suggest that you practice exporting, uploading it to Canvas, go to a clean directory, download it from Canvas, import it back into Eclipse, and make sure that everything comes out the right way. And you want to practice on this very soon, not when you've got your final project all ready to go. Because sometimes when you practice this, you end up clobbering your project. So you want to make a junk project with a couple of classes and experiment with it. And we're going to do that this morning to, um, to get an idea of what the, the whole upload process is. Um, So questions? Yeah. Then uh, the answer will display the, to the fourth decimal? Or the oh, well, if you're doing integers, it's just integers. Okay. If you're doing decimals, um, you can pick. So usually a display only holds a certain amount, but you can make your display really big, or you can make it eight characters, or up to you. And then. Um, but you know, if you do one third, it probably shouldn't just say 0.3. It should say like 0.333, some number of times. But the the actual doing of the calculations, right, is is just stuff Java's going to do for you, right? Basically, you're going to want to remember the first number that's entered, remember the second number that's entered, and when the equal sign is pressed, remember what the operator was, and then if they said plus add the two numbers together, put that on the display. If they said times, multiply the numbers, put that on the display. And depending on how you do this, I had a really freaky experience because I started writing this just to kind of see how bad it would be. And a lot of things started working that I didn't actually code. <laughs> and that was kind of weird. So, 2 times 3 equals 6. Okay, that's like 35 points right there. <laughs> okay, I went ahead and did a decimal point, so you can do like 1 divided by 7, and you get that. But some weird things happen because you're doing floating point. It's got scientific notation automatically. 
Yeah, because in my code, I've got doubles instead of ints, and when I multiply them and I concatenate it to the label, it puts on an E with an exponent if it's bigger than, you know, a few digits. Um, so that's kind of cool. Is that just part of it's like built in two string? Yeah, yeah. And if it gets too big, it infinity. says infinity. <laughs> but also, if you do like one divided by zero, if you're using doubles and you're letting the doubles do their thing, that's infinity. Wow. If I do minus one divided by zero, that's minus infinity. <laughs> and if you do zero divided by zero, that's not a number, right? I didn't code any of that. <laughs> so, so some of these things may be easier than than you might think, right? Because doubles are really powerful things. Um, if you have two doubles and the bottom one is zero and you divide, right? It gives you this number that's infinity, and if you convert it to a string, it's I N F I N I T Y. Yeah. Like priority? Yeah. No, no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. So if, if, if we calculate strong answer, it's okay. It's okay. If you calculate what? If you get strong result, it's going to be okay. Um, so if, if you decide to, to somehow put in priority, so, so for example, if I say 2 plus 3, well, so my calculator doesn't work. If I say 2 plus 3 times 6, it's only going to do the 3 times 6. So I didn't, I didn't finish that up. But if you say 2 plus 3 times 6, right, you might be saying... Um, a typical dollar store calculator would say 2 plus 3 is 5 times 6. It's going to give you a 30, right? A fancier calculator might realize that the 3 times 6 should be done first and 2 plus 18 would give you a 20. Um, don't do that unless you really want to take on the challenge, right? And if you do that, let me know. This calculator pays attention to precedence of operators, and it'll do multiply divide first. Say again? Um, I would do it like this. I would just do 2 plus 3 is 5 times 6 is 30. Yeah. I would I would like you to have fun with this. <laughs> okay? I'd like you to to um find a, a balance of you know, trying to get code to work and understand Java and that kind of stuff, but also having some some fun with doing the layout and designing this and figuring out what features you want and that kind of thing. Yeah. Are you saying if you write like ten in the calculator and you start hitting the input button every time it should add two? Um for the bonus that that you get from constants. So if I say 2 times 6, that gives me 2 times 6. If I say 9 equals, that gives me 2 times 9. If I say 1 equals, that gives me 2 times 1. If I say 6 plus 3 equals, if I say 0, that gives me 6 plus 0. If I say 99, that gives me 6 plus 99. That's right? Intended. Hmm? That's intended. Yeah, that's like, you know, a constant feature on a calculator. So if I say two times times and I just keep hitting equals, it keeps multiplying by two. I knew that one existed. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that you could change the input number and still keep that constant. Yeah, I think that's actually the original idea of it, and then I thought this was like the sneaky thing to do, but I don't know. I was a kid. <laughs> if you wanted it to accept keyboard input as well, you would just create a key 
key listener? Yeah. And then yeah. just link it to the same code? Mm hmm. Yeah. And if you want to add that in, that would be cool. So this is this is like a petri dish that you can use to explore different things. All right, other questions, comments? Bless you. All right, well, let's look at some Eclipse. And I want to look at this export business, too. Did everybody sign in? So here's a linked list class that I've been playing with. So there's my main method, which creates a my list and does a bunch of ads and then prints it out using concatenation. There's a class for my list, which is a collection of nodes, and there's a class for node. Um, with a deliberate lack of comments, for reasons we'll talk about in a bit. Um, so, so you've written this and you want to submit it to Canvas. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. I haven't done this in a while. Um, first of all, you should only have one project open at a time. Okay, so these things are projects. This is my calculator project. This is my linked list project. Every time you create a project, you're going to see it sitting here. And this little arrow next to it tells me the project is open. So I can expand it and I can come down and I can look at source code and so on and so forth. And right now I've got two projects open. I would say don't do that. When you're working on a project, make sure all your other projects are closed. An easy way to do that, I want to work with a linked list uh, project. I can go to file, well, maybe. Um, maybe I can right click and say close unrelated projects. So that'll close my calculator project. Now I got exactly one project open, which is linked list. And if I want to close that, I can right click and close. Okay, no little triangles next to these. All my projects are closed. So if I want to work on a linked list, I can just double click. That opens it. Okay, so I want to upload to Canvas. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say export. And I'm going to export, um, let's go to general, and I'm going to do archive file. So I guess I'm going to write these down. Vibrant. I got bigger pins. You can see your hand too. Yeah, my hand's looking vibrant. <laughs> All right, so we're going to say archive file. So you should have linked list over here, and it should be checked. If I were to expand this, I'd see settings, bin, and source, and they're all checked. But don't mess with this, right? Just make sure this box is checked. If it's not checked, check it. Okay, and these should show up over here. They should be checked. That's fine. Um, so you want to enter to archive file. fill in some place to put this. So to archive file, I'll just stick it on my desktop like everything else, um, and I'll call it linklist.zip. list.zip. 
And I'm not going to mess with any of these other things. Okay, just put in the path and say finish. So now I have a link list.zip. And if I look inside there, there's a folder link list. If I look in there, there's this whole directory structure. There's source bin settings, etc. If I look in source, there's my actual source code. Okay, this is not just a zip file of my Java files. And if you just take those and zip them up with zip or something, it's not going to import into Eclipse properly. So I want to see if this is a usable zip file that my teacher can grade. So first thing I'm going to do, if, if I try to import that into here, it's going to tell me I've already got a linked list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this project. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say rename and I'm going to call this linked list original. And I'm going to close this. Alright, so this is export. And this is import. Alright, so I'm going to say file import. going to general and I'm going to pick existing project into workspace so I'm not going to do archive file I'm going to do existing project into workspace Do select archive file. So select archive file, browse to your archive, desktop, link list.zip, and this should be checked, and then I'm just going to say finish. And there's my linked list. And my source code is still intact. And I can still run this. Got that? So like I say, try this on your own. Try it with... with a junk file. It doesn't have to do anything. Just write a couple of Java classes, export it, rename the original project to get it out of the way, and then try to import the zip file. And if you try to import a zip file, an archive file. It's just going to give you all kinds of heartache. Also, if you want to rename a project, it's got to be open. So that's your submission process, and the zip file gets uploaded to Canvas.
about mm -hmm. documentation. <clears throat> so I have a method here called void, called void add. Takes an integer, adds it to my linked list, adds it in inserted order. If the list is empty, it creates an initial node, all sorts of stuff, right? We should be documenting our methods, our functions, right, thoroughly enough that somebody can come in and read the documentation and understand what this function is, how to use it, the side effects, and so on and so forth. Okay, so when you're in an IDE like Eclipse, it will help you write documentation. So I'm going to come down here right before this method and I'm going to write one line. I'm going to say slash star star. Now slash star begins a comment block. So slash star star is also beginning a comment block. The second star is just part of the comment. But the IDE will pick up on the fact that it's two stars after a slash and it's right before a method and when I hit enter it will generate some other stuff for me. It makes an empty line with a star, it makes a line that says at param num and then it puts a star slash to close my comment. Okay so what it's asking me to do here is write down a description of what this method does. So at this point, I would say something like um, add an integer to the list in sorted order. And since there's an argument named num, it made this line that says at param num. And what I can do after this is I can specify what num is. So num is the integer to add to the list does not need to be unique. Okay, so that's that's a, a useful piece of documentation perhaps. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing down here. Um, convert the linked list to a string of space separated integers. And up here in the beginning of my class, I'm going to say slash star star through in a tag that said at author Nick, because it knows my name. Um, linked list class. All right, so we've got comments in there, right, which is good. We can do something more, though. So we can come up here to project, and we can say generate Java doc. And if we click on that, it will say um, what class do you want. So we're going to generate Java doc for our linked list project. Um, and it's going to generate information for anything that's public. So my constructor, my add method, my two-string method, if I wanted to generate constructors for other um, private things and so on, I can check this box instead. And we need a destination, so it's going to go into, I'm just going to put this on my desktop. And so it's created some files for me under that directory linked list doc. So let's go into that directory. Uh, linked list doc. And I got a whole bunch of files. So if I click on index.html, it brings up a nicely formatted page of documentation for the MyList class. 
and it tells me my list is a java.lang.object. It's a public class my list, and there's my description: linked list class demo builds and converts a simple list of ints. Author Nick. Constructor my list methods. There's an add method. There's a two string method, and I can click on the add method, and there's a description of add. Add an integer to the list. Parameter is num. The integer to add to the list does not need to be unique. And this is a standardized format, right, that most classes that you encounter in Java will have documentation that looks more or less exactly like this, with the specifics obviously changing. But um, the organization of it is the same. The look and feel is the same. <coughs> All right, so there's a lot you can do with these tags, this slash star star business. If there's a return type of variable, it, it can tag that for you. You can put more information about the author. You can include um, your affiliation and, and other information, and it will put all of those um, in the, the header up here. So um, good thing to experiment with. Right? I'm not going to require you to submit Java documentation for PA3. I might for PA5, um, but not for this one. But good thing to experiment with and really, really useful if you're developing classes that you might actually be using down the road. Right? So I have a lot of students from WSU who come back to me and say, hey, you know that Dijkstra's algorithm that we coded that one time? I got to use that. And I was so happy that I had it on GitLab because I was able to find the source code, you know. And I wish I had commented it better. <laughs> right? So, so as you move forward, right, you're going to be building more and more sort of useful building blocks that you're you're actually going to, um, you know, want to refer back to either to use or to refresh yourself on how certain things work. And having, you know, nice documentation for this is is certainly useful. Um, and these are just files, right? I can archive them, I can save them, but if I have a website presence, right, and I want to document this, I can just throw this on a website. And if you have an index HTML, that's the page that loads when you go to the site. Questions, comments? So when you first start Eclipse, if you haven't done anything in Eclipse before, sometimes the first thing you need to do is say window, perspective, open perspective, other, and say Java default. We mentioned this the other day. And it gives you this kind of layout where you have projects on the left, code in the middle, uh, output down in the bottom, your console window. There's usually things on the right. There's task lists and stuff like that. And you can move these things around as you see fit. I can put my console up there, and I can close out my project navigator and, and so on and so forth. Um, and if you go window perspective, open perspective, other, Java default, it usually does nothing. Should bring you back to your default perspective, but maybe not. Uh, there's another way. Oh, you think you have to exit and come back? No, as in go to a different perspective and then come back. There's a way to reset the windows, though, too. Um, reset perspective. There we go. OK, so this is the way it'll look when you first go in. So there's the task list, and so on and so forth. Um, so Monday, I want to talk about 
this debug perspective. And you can mess with this on your own, but this is basically a built-in debugger. And it's very visual in nature. Um, you can set breakpoints by just double clicking. And if you run debug, it will stop when it gets to a breakpoint. And you can use F6 to step over, F5 to step in. And you can see your objects up here. So new node is a node. It's got a data value of 10. It's got a next value of null, and so on and so forth. This, the object that we're in right now, is a my list. It has a head, which is a node, which has a data value of 5 and a next value of null, and so on. And you can step through here one instruction at a time. You can jump into methods and come back and so on and evaluate expressions. You can also hover over your code and see the values of things. So new node is a node. It's got data 10, next is null, and so on. So this exposes all of the internals of your methods while they're running, lets you step one at a time, see what's going on. So kind of like GDB, um, but, but almost completely visual, no typing of print and things like that. But you've got you know, everything that you want, including all of your source code. So that's a helpful debugging technique. All right, cool. Have a good weekend. I will see you Monday.